Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear your worship right here. I trust you. In the middle of your worship, can you just start telling the Lord, I trust you. I trust you with my everything. You've done too much for me for me to doubt you now. Come on, you got a testimony. You have records of how faithful he's been. Come on, if you know him to be your Jehovah Jireh, and you know that all things are going to work out for your good, let me hear the sound in the building. Those online begin to release a worship even now. Hallelujah. You do all things well. Clap your hands and release a praise right here. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Um, I feel as if the message today is like a life-saving message for many of you all. And I want many of you all to understand that the power of life and death is in your tongue. That when you speak, you set things into motion. Can everyone under the sound of my voice, I need you to prophesy at the top of your year and speak through the rest of your year. Open your mouth and say, I will lack nothing. Come on, I need you to, I need you to release it. Come on, open your mouth again and say, I will lack nothing. Nothing. I wanted to show you the scripture that the Lord gave me to open up this today. We're talking about the unexpected. And today's sermon is entitled, Unexpected Provision. Unexpected Provision. Hear me clearly. Your job is not your source. Come on, I'm going to say that again. Your job and the government is not your source. You better hear me. The scripture that I want to give you is in Psalms 37 and 25. Those of us from old school, we know this because we, we read the King James Version. And it says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. He not going to just take care of you, but he going to take care of your kids. Nor his seed begging bread open your mouth again and say I will lack nothing come on if you re we're going to get this sound right come on if you receive that release of praise right there all right so what we're going to do we're going to spend most of our time in first Kings 17 but let me give you some history we're going to talk about a time that there was a drought in the land it was not something that happened just for a while. Like many of us, we did not believe that the pandemic would even last this long. But the drought lasted a total of three years. James lets us know that here it lasted three and a half years. Pay attention. The reason for the drought was to bring the children of Israel back to God. I hold up some things to make sure that you need me. And once you come to me, then I'll release some things. How did it get this bad? Pay attention. The Bible lets us know that there was a king over Israel by the name of Ahab. He had married a woman who was not an Israelite and he, who did not believe in his God. She worshipped the God of Baal. Please pay attention. Now she is the queen and she sits in the seat of influence. You have to be careful of who you allow to influence you. Come on, let's go Bible. As a result of that, the altars of God are torn down, and then eventually, altars of Baal are set up. Pay attention. The Canaanite god Baal, they believed, was the god of the rain, storms, and farms. But God is the God of the universe. He's the only true and living God. There is no other God besides him. And whatever he got to prove that he's God, he'll do it all by himself. 
Is there anybody besides me that's not ashamed or embarrassed to decree and declare, I don't care who you think is a God, there's only one God. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. We are in a day that they want to say, well, everybody got a belief or religion. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you stand on. I'm telling you that I stand on the truth. And he is the way, the truth, and the light. Come on here. So the Bible lets us know, listen to this, that Elijah is going to be a part of this. He is a key part of change. Everyone under the sound of my voice, can you open your mouth and say, I am a key part of change. Come on, say it again. I am a key part of change. So God is about to release um, a drought in the land. Hear me clearly. It's not going to happen without Elijah. Now listen, he's going to speak it, but he's going to have, have to live in it and through it. Hear me clearly. God's not going to remove him. You're going to have to live in it. You're going to have to live through it, but you're going to know that God is God. For those of y'all in the sound of my voice, you're going to have to deal with this pandemic. He's not going to remove you from it. You're going to be in the middle of it. You're going to live through it. You're going to live in it, but you're going to know that God is God. Is there anybody besides me that he's already proven that he is God? Come on here. I might be around it, but it ain't coming past my doorposts. I might be in it, but I'm not going to go through like everybody else. You have to hear me. How many of y'all remember the time when there was something called the recession? When there was a recession, everybody was saying, the economy's going down. Everybody's struggling. Everybody lacking. I kept telling us, we in it, but we not participating. I need some of y'all to open your mouth and say, I'm in it, but I'm not participating. Come on, say it again. I'm in it, but I'm not participating. So God will provide for the prophet Elijah when everybody else around him is going through. I'm going to say that again. God is about to provide for you. While everybody around you might be going through, you're not going to lack anything. Oh, I'm trying to build your faith up because some of y'all, you have already begun to confess that you're struggling like everybody else. But if I can get you to open your mouth, your positive words are about to outrun your negative words. The words that you speak at the top of the year would run through January, February, March, April, May, June, July. It would run, make it through the rest of the year. I need you to open your mouth and decree and declare, I will lack nothing. Come on here. Every single citizen, every single person, every married person, I need you to open your mouth. I need you to open your mouth and say it with power and authority. I will lack nothing. Now, anybody can say that, but if we walk by faith and not by sight, we don't just say it, but we put a praise on the end of it. I need you to open your mouth. Your rent going to be paid. Tuition going to be paid. Groceries are going to be on the table. Lights ain't going on. He's about to add. He's about to increase. I need you to open your mouth and then put a praise behind it. I will lack nothing. Now put a praise right there. Unexpected provision. Unexpected provision. Now I'm going to say something. Those of you are online and those of you are that are in the building, I need you to remove yourself from social media. I need you to not allow anything to distract you from getting the revelation of how your provision is about to be made. Come on here. Your status is not going to change within an hour. You're still going to be single. Listen to me. Let's go. Can everybody say, I'm about to receive unexpected provision? Say it again. I'm about to receive unexpected provision. A check coming in the mail. The doorbell is going to ring. A phone call is going to be made. I'm going to get a walk-up blessing. Somebody just going to slide some in my hand. Come on here. I'm not playing with y'all today. This thing is spiritual. Open your mouth again and say, I will receive unexpected provision. 
Come on, put that on the screen. I will receive unexpected provision. Unexpected provision will not happen until you answer your call. And you are called to do what God called you to do. Nothing happened until Elijah answered the call to do what he do. He is a prophet. He literally has to prophesy for things to kick off. Provision does not start until you do what you've been called to do. Come on, let's go Bible. In 1 Kings 17 and 1, the Bible says, Now Elisha the Tishbite from Tish is in Gilead, said to Ahab, watch his words, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, watch his words, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Did you understand? Nothing's going to happen until I speak it. You better understand the power that you have. Come on here. There will be no rain nor dew. I am a prophet. I am doing what I've been called to do. Everybody hear me. David was called to do what? Do what he do. When Saul called him, what did he do? He played the harp. Come on here. Elijah called to prophesy. He told Peter, come with me and I will make you what? A fisherman. You do what you do. You continue to do what you do and you begin to release some things. You can't do what anybody else do. You can only do what you've been called to do. What am I saying? Pastor Reed, keep teaching. Come on here. What am I saying? Keep praying. Keep worshiping. Whatever you do, you keep doing you because as long as you do you, you keep things going into motion. The, 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 the worst thing that you can do is fold your hands, close your arms, and not do anything. You are the set it off individual. Come on here. As long as you do what God called you to do, be not weary in well doing. But in due season, you gonna reap, watch me, if you keep doing what you've been doing. Watch me, anybody can pray when things are going good, anything that can, can praise God, but it takes a special person when things ain't looking good to keep doing what you do. Come on here, let's go Bible. James goes a little further and lets us know he didn't just do it, but he did it with prayer. Look at the screen. In James 5 and 17, Elisha was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. In other words, he didn't just do it, he wrapped that thing in prayer. The one ingredient that is missing with many of us, you're doing it, but you ain't praying about doing it. Come on here. Everything, can everybody say everything? Everything has to be wrapped in prayer. You can't be a mother without praying. You can't be a wife without praying. You can't work in church without praying. You can't live in the midst of a pandemic without praying. You have to look to the hills from with coming to your help. Everything you do, the difference between you doing it and somebody else doing it is that you're doing it with power. How did you get the power? You got it through prayer. I need you to encourage somebody. Come on, y'all, do me a favor. Type it on the screen. Look at somebody and say, please, uh, pray and do what you do. 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 But whatever you do, don't stop doing what God calls you to do. Come on, y'all, look at somebody else and tell them, whatever you do, I'm begging you, pray and do what you do do pray every preacher every teacher every evangelist every man of God every woman of God I am begging you in the name of the Lord Jesus don't let the devil stop you from doing what you're doing wrap that thing in prayer and execute but don't stop doing what you're doing As a result, bring the, the picture up of the drought, the dry land. As a, re, as a result, this is the result of what he spoke. Pay attention. But you're going to live in it. Oh, my God. I'm not going to remove you from it, but I'm about to be a blessing in the midst of a dry place. 
Oh my God. Watch me. This would make some of y'all start panicking. But if you prayed and you know that God is in it, you know how to worship God when you can't see it. Do me a favor. Lift your hands in the middle of it and begin to worship God right there. And as you pray, and as you do what you do, then comes the second thing. You, everybody hear me, are about to be challenged. Mm. You are about to be challenged. He's about to send you somewhere that's going to be a challenge for you. Watch me. Watch me. Please pay attention to this. You have to get this one. In verse 2, the Bible says, then, everybody say then. Watch me. You don't get to the then until you do your now. The then didn't come until after he spoke. After you do what you've been called to do, then you'll get to your then. Then the word of the Lord came to him, to Elijah. Now ready? Pay attention to the three things. I'm going to need you to leave here. After you leave here, I'm going to need you to turn eastward. This is my devotion last night. And then I'm going to need you to hide. I'm going to need you to watch me. After you do what you do, back up from doing it, turn eastward, now go into a secret place. Now, some would have thought that this would have been his platform to release him. Because watch me, who is the man that spoke and said that there would be no rain, no dew? It is Elijah. Elijah is the one that said it. So one would think that this could be the place that he would now be platformed, that he would be the major prophet, that everybody would be walk, looking, walking around looking for him. But hear me clearly, sometimes God will have you to do what you do and then back you up and make you high. Just when you think you're about to take off, he puts you in a secret place. All they got to say to me, just because you did it don't mean that it's your season as of yet. Maybe there's some lessons that you got to learn. Watch me. Watch me. You did it. Now back up. Now tuck away and hide. And there are many of you all, you thought that you have been forgotten about. But God sent me to tell you, he's been hiding you. Mm. Now, I want you to bring the scripture back up. Bring the scripture back up. Bring the scripture back up. Oh, I like that. Watch it. Watch me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not that one. The next one. The challenge. The challenge. Come on here. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here. Turn eastward. Hide in the current raven. Watch me. The current. Watch me. What is the definition of that? Listen. That, that means to cut away. To cut up to cut off. So I'm going to take you someplace and I'm going to cut off some things. I'm going to cut away some things. Everybody hear me. During this season of the pandemic, he's been cutting away some things. He's been cutting off some people. Come on here. He's been opening you up. He's been dissecting you. He's been showing you this is a challenge because just when you thought you were going to go forward, he made you pull back. Watch me. Why is he hiding you? My devotion last night. He's hiding you to protect you. Why is he hiding you? He's hiding you to teach you how to depend on God. Why is he hiding you? Because he's breaking some stuff off for you. Why is he hiding you so you could hear your next then? Mm. Hear what I just said. Why is he hiding you so he could teach you, bring the water up, that you are totally dependent upon him? Come on here. I'm going to teach you to be dependent upon me because I'm going to send you, pay attention, to a brook. To a brook. Watch me. I hid the brook from everybody else. This will be a place that only you will be able to drink from. Watch me. Everybody else should be able to hear the water, but they won't hear what I got for you. Come on here. I'm hiding you. Watch me. What's more important, to be out there or to be taken care of? What's more important, for people to know who you are or for God to know where you are? Come on here, y'all. I don't know about you, but I don't care where he had me. I know that he's going to take care of me. Don't... Ooh, ooh, wait, 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 wait,
wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait. He said, I want you to hide, and I want you to go to a brook. Challenge, 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 challenge. Verse 4, you will drink. You will drink. You will drink from the brook. And I have, pay attention, directed the ravens. You so special to me. It ain't going to just be one bird. I'm going to send ravens. Stop looking for singular blessings. Plural blessings are about to overtake you. Oh my God. Ah, you're going to drink from the one brook. Pay attention. But I have commanded the ravens to supply you with food there. Everybody say ravens. The challenge is, is that you're going to have to receive from something that you thought was filthy. Something that you thought was beneath you. I'm going to put you in a direction that you're going to have to receive from something that you've been taught wasn't right for you. Come on here. It's not on your level, but it got your blessing. You might have to work someplace that's not on your level, but it's been commanded to take care of you. Come on here. You might have to deal with some people that are not on your level, but they've been commanded to take care of you. Some ravens. Oh, I call the unexpected blessings to come in your direction not just one but multiple watch me and you ain't got to do nothing crooked to get it you just got to wake up every morning and receive what God has for you pay attention and the Bible says pay attention and God commanded the ravens watch me to bring him meat and bread in the morning and then again in the evening. Question me, you might have been hungry when you woke up. I'm going to take care of you then. Go ahead and work your day. Because when you get hungry again, I'm going to meet another need. Come on here. I have multiple blessings. Oh my God. God, please let your word come forth with power and conviction. And let your people be ready to receive the multiple blessings. Unexpected it is a challenge to receive from what you thought was beneath you. Hear me, attention. Pay attention. Some people are going to walk up and try to give you something. I need you not to say, No, I'm good. I'm straight. Take it. Take everything that God has provided for you. Come on here. I mean, put your whole hand out and get everything that God has for you. Those of you all that are ready to receive, pay attention. I need you to be careful. One bird is not going to be enough. Keep looking. There's more coming in your direction. I need you to begin to release a praise right here. If you're going to accept the challenge this year, come on here. That multiple blessings. It is a challenge to be hidden. It is a challenge to receive, but I believe that God's going to take care of everything that concerneth me. Open your mouth and release a praise right here. Go. Ready? Bring the water back up. Bring the water back up. Bring the water back up. So for some of y'all, <laughs> this has been your hiding place. He's been taking care of you. You've been drinking. Everybody else going through, you ain't going through what they're going through. I live in the same community that you live in, but I don't struggle the way you struggle. Come on here. Yep, there's a virus. I know it is, but I'm not participating. Come on here. Come on here. Can you open your mouth? And can you open your mouth and say, God, I will lack nothing. 
I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get something. I'm not playing with you. If you don't open your mouth, I'm going to jump off the stage and bust you in the head with this mic. I mean, open your mouth and prophesy and say, I will lack nothing. Come on here. Those of y'all that feel like you've been in a secret place, open your mouth and say, even in my secret place, he make blessings come to where I am. Come on, y'all. I need... Hold on, let's go. Hold on, let's go. Hold on, let's go. But what do you do when the brooks start drying up? What do you do when what you had plenty of start decreasing? Pay attention. Watch me. The Bible says, and the brook ran dry. Pay attention. But it never said that the ravens stopped coming. Which means that sometimes you're so busy looking at the brook that you forget he still keep blessing in this area. And if he do this, obviously something must be coming next. Y'all ain't hearing me today. God, I pray that we prepare for what is next. Some of y'all watch me. They didn't fire you. They set you up for what is next. They didn't let you go. They set you. God let the brook dry up so that you could get to your then. Hold on, Danny. I'm not playing with y'all today. I am so focused today. Watch me. I, I, want, I want to testify real quick. My challenge, at one point, I lost my job. I quit my good government job running after some money. Got a job working out by the airport doing computer customer service. You know this ain't none of me. I was running after the money, and they eventually laid me off. I had to literally go and sit in an unemployment office. I'm up in there like, God, are you kidding me? And the Lord said, submit to it. There's something I'm teaching you in this process while you don't have a job, I'm about to show you that I am your source. I am your Jehovah Jireh. I'm going to take care of you even when it look like you're running out. Is that? I need you to clap your hands and just say, yes, Lord. Everybody that got a little lack going on in your life. I need you not to look at the brook, but look at the ravens and see that God keeps taking care of you. If you don't open your mouth in this building and release a praise, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's a challenge to keep giving them glory. It's a challenge to keep coming to church. It's a challenge to keep serving. It's a challenge to keep tithing. It's a challenge to keep giving. Watch me. It's a challenge to be a blessing to somebody when you need a blessing. It's a challenge to pray for people when you need somebody to pray for you. It's a challenge to encourage yourself, but you get to encourage everybody. Look at me. Oh my God. I need you to pass this challenge right now. It's a challenge to bless the Lord at all times and to let his praises con continually be in my mouth. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get back on track because I can't take you to your then until you do your now. I can't take you to your next then until you do your now. In the building online, lift your hands and worship God and submit to the challenge. We don't run from challenges. We don't dodge challenges. We face them and we know that all things are going to work together for our good. Lift your hands and open your mouth. Ready? Come on. Come on, God. Come on. I got to shift your people. Come on, God. We're about to shift your people. Come on here. They've answered the call. They submitted to the challenge. 
You've answered the call. I'm doing what he called me to do. I'm doing exactly what he called me to do. I'm, I'm, I'm facing the challenge of being hidden. I'm facing the challenge of receiving from what is beneath me. Once, look at me, once you accept the challenge, you can now get to your next then. Ready? Your next one is going to be a commission. You have to hear me now. Because your steps have to be ordered by God. You can't afford to get in your flesh. You can't afford to just do stupid stuff. You can't afford to have a panic attack. Has he not done enough to prove to you that he is your God. Oh, I feel the anointing at 7.30 this morning. I hear the Lord telling me to ask you, have I ever let you down? Have I ever let you fail? Even what looked like a failure was a win. I need you before I order you to lay me a praise right here. Those of you that trust the Lord with all your heart and you're not leaning to your own understanding and you believe that unexpected provision is about to come your way, release a praise here for your next. Hey, Mashiach. Everybody stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, can you look at somebody and tell them, I lack nothing. Come on, y'all, please obey me in this one. Please obey me in this one. Please obey me in this one. You're about to get up under an open heaven. You're about to get in the place that God wants you to be. He's about to prove himself to be mighty and strong in your life. Look at somebody. I'm trying to get you to prophesy. Open your mouth and say, I lack nothing. Unexpected provisions. I'm about to come in my direction. He gonna get you out of debt in the midst of a... Ah, ah. I lack... Open your mouth and say, the blessings are coming. As you stand, please pay attention. So you answered the call, you keep doing what you, keep doing you. You've answered the challenge. You didn't force yourself out, you pulled back. You've answered the challenge. You received in spaces that you never thought that you would be in. The ravens kept coming. And I had to change my idea of what I thought was a nasty bird as a blessing bird. Y'all, <laughs> what, what I thought was nasty and messed around and turned around to be my blessing. I can't explain this one. You did more than I ever ex Anybody God blew your mind during this season? Can you open your mouth and say, you did more than I ever. Hey. I don't like the way some of y'all looking. You got a spirit of entitlement on you. That's why I had to hide you to break pride up off of you. I had to humble you to let you know that everything you got is coming from me. Come on, release a praise right here just for a few seconds. Everybody, 
open your mouth to say that. Then what? But that say that again. You did more than I ever expected. Then if he did more, he's expecting more of a praise from you. On the count of three, I need you to release the best praise you have right here. I need you to release a more praise. One, two, three, go. I didn't bring you this far to let you down. If I let the brook dry up, then the question is, what's next? If I let a brook dry up, then the question is, what's next? If I let something dry up, that means I got another blessing in store for you. Come on here. Get on the low second. Stop, stop, I feel a break. Have I not paid your bills? Have I not made a way out of no way? Have I not always opened a door? Have I not always been your Jehovah Jireh? Have I not healed your body before? Have I not given you favor? If I did it then, prepare yourself. Get ready at the top of your year. Get ready at the top of your year. Get ready at the beginning. Because your ending is going to be better than your beginning. I called you. You. Now I'm about to release you. Next. Everybody open your mouth and shout. Next. Get in the seat of expectation. Prepare yourself. What I allowed to try up is to get you to your next. What I allowed to try up is to get you to your next. What I allowed to try up is to get you to your next. You never would leave. too comfortable I want to stretch you I want to enlarge your territory everybody open your mouth and shout next I'm ready you gotta get this you got to get this next. Everybody in the sound of my voice, I need you to hear me clearly. Because your next, two things are attached. You're going to have to be in the right place, surrounded by the right people to get your next. Come on, you have to hear me now. You have to hear me. Bring the scripture up. Then, look at that then again. You can't get to your now until you do your then. You can't get to your then until you do your now. I'm sorry. You can't get to your then until you do your now. So I, I answered the call now, then I got to then. Then go to the brook. Then I submitted. I submitted to the challenge of being hidden. I submitted to receiving from what I thought was filthy. 
but turn out to be a blessing. Are you kidding me? You gonna make me receive unemployment? Yep. You gonna make somebody come over here and bring me groceries? Yep. You gonna make somebody pay my bills? But they don't even like me, I know. You ready? So then the brook dries up. Everybody look at me. What do you do when you obey God and went where you supposed to be, but what you need is not there anymore? You have to hear this. The brook dries up. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go. Go at once. To Zarephath in the region of Sodom. Watch me, leave the scripture up here. Don't change the scripture. And stay there. Where is this? This is outside of Israel. Look at me. This is the hometown of Jezebel. So you about to call me outside my resume? You about to call me outside my job description? You about to call me outside of what I got comfortable in? Go at once and stay there. Pay attention. And when you get there, you're going to meet your clique. Your blessing is going to be connected to somebody that would never come where you were, but you had to go where they were to get your next. That's why I tell some of y'all, you don't have time to just be coming to church, standing next to anybody. I need to make sure I stand next to my click. I need, I need, you could be Mary, let me be Elizabeth. I need my spirit to lead when I stand next to you to let me know that God's about to do it. An exchange. It's an exchange. I've commanded a widow. Pay attention. I've commanded a widow to take care of you. A widow? You mean a woman who don't have that much? But she got what you need. She got the cake. You got the flavor. You got the oil. I don't need to bring all the meat oil. I need you to meet with somebody that have the resources, but you got the oil. And when there's a clash, they get the oil and you get the blessing. I need you to hear me now. I need you to hear me now. In 2022, many of you all will be called outside of your comfort zone. Not to meet everybody, but your blessing is connected to one person. You have to hear me. And they are not, they don't have all of that, but they have what you need to get you to where you're supposed to be. Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. I could go through this church and I could call out names who God called outside of their comfort zone and got them here to connect to the right people. And once you have your click, your life will never be the same. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My wife is not from Chicago. She not. She was born in Korea, raised in Detroit, thought she was coming here for somebody else. 
I'm so glad he left her in the desert. Because had he not left her at the desert, I never would have been ordered to get her where I was supposed to. Come on here. Come on here. Ready? 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 You see the young man that's over my ministry, John Hanna Ministry, JB. JB came here with an artist. He was managing an artist and came to a service at the USC Forum. But when I spoke, something clicked. And the Lord said to him, pay attention, because you're going to have to leave Boston and move to Chicago and sit and serve. Hear me clearly. He hid for over a year. You better hear what I'm saying to you. He never made himself known. Came to my office and said, I know you don't remember me, but I heard click, click. Look at me. When I hired him, pay attention. I need you to hear me. My books were in the red. I was at a negative balance. Click. Everybody say, I'm ready to meet my click. If I be a man of God, and I know I am, this would be your year of clicks. This would be the year that God's going to walk you dug in front of somebody, and your whole world is about to be turned upside down. And not only are you going to be blessed, everybody that's connected to you is about to reap from you. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I literally, pay attention, I literally handed him everything. In order for you to get your next, you're going to have to release. Your divine, your supernatural, your unexpected provision won't come until you release. He meets the woman at the well. He said, go and get me something to eat. She says, oh, with tears running, I have nothing. All I have is a cake. Me and my son are going to eat and die. He said, release it. Release it. Stop being in control. Turn everything over. Release it. Everybody look at me. Please hear. hear you got to hear me. You got to hear me. You have to hear me. Everybody that moved here from another state, if you're in the building, can you raise your hand? Everyone that moved it from another state and you know that God sent you here, can you raise both hands? Those of y'all that are from Chicago, I need you to look around. I need you to look around. He, watch me. I'm not saying that he's going to send you out of state. What, I'm, what I am saying, he's about to call you outside your boat. In order for you to get your blessing, you're going to have to walk on some water. Eric, Eric raise your hand. Senior pastor. Sat at a table with me studying for years. We studied every Monday. Every Monday. He closed his ministry, went someplace else, thinking that that was it. But here I am in prayer. And the Lord said, reach for Eric. I reached for Eric. You know what he said? I've been waiting on this. And for some of y'all, he's about to give you what you've been waiting on. But it's commission. You're going to have to step outside your comfort zone. you got to go into untreaded territory. you got to do something. Watch me. And when one man goes in, somebody else is connected to the blessing. The Bible says, she says, me and my son are going to eat, and then we're going to die. But then once she released, the Bible said the blessings hit the house. You keep reading the scripture. It says her and her family. What does that mean? It wasn't just about her and her son. She called her whole family in to get in on the blessings. And some of y'all, you are about to be the open door for your entire family. You're about to flip the script. You're about to... I just need you to make sure you're next to somebody that can help your worship click. Can you do me a favor? Can you look to your left and your right and say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Put my, put the last picture on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I lack nothing. Your blessing is bigger than your address. Your blessing is bigger than your zip code. Your blessing is bigger than where you work. Your blessing is bigger than your resume. Your blessing is bigger than your friends. He is about to hook you up. But you can't get to your then until you do your now. Your prayers can't be answered until you pray. Your praise can't be heard until you praise him. Why, watch me, you can't have a net breaking boat sinking year until you cast your net. You holding on to what you're supposed to release. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to call your unexpected provisions to come in your direction. On the count of three, I need everybody in the building to release your name. One, two, three. Come on. I'm gonna give you another opportunity to release your name. I'm gonna give you another opportunity to release your name. I'm gonna give you another opportunity to release your name. Your name is gonna go where your resume wouldn't go. Your name is about to go where your zip code is not. Your name is about to hit the spirit of somebody. On the count of three, release your name. One, two, three. John Hanna. Now I'm gonna need you to release the praise behind your name. On the count of three, you're on the scene. I need you to release the praise behind your name. One, two, three. Come on, online. I need you to release a praise. Every pastor release a praise. Every teacher release a praise. Every business owner release a praise. Every senior release a praise. Every woman release a praise. Every man release a praise. It's getting ready to happen. Be not weary. Come on, y'all. I need you to get ready to prophesy. I like nothing. Come on, set it off at the top of your year. Release another praise right here. Go. I like nothing. Houses paid off. Automobiles paid off. Keys handed to you. Blessings coming in every direction. Come on, say it again. I like nothing. I answer the call. I accept the challenge. And I give in to the release. I accept the call. I receive the challenge. And I'm ready to do what you tell me to do. Come on, y'all. We're moving. Come on. I feel a yes, Lord. I feel a yes, Lord. I feel a yes, Lord. Clap your hands and say, yay! I received the call. I accept the challenge and I give in to the release. I accept the call. I receive the challenge 
and I give in to the release. You should say that I accept the calling. I receive the challenge and I give in to the release. Clap your hands one more time right here. I need you to encourage somebody. Give somebody a fist bump and tell them, you right where you supposed to be. You right where you supposed to be. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You're around who you supposed to be around. Lift your hands and worship God for 10 seconds. 10. Nine. Who would have ever thought that you would be close to who you're close to? Who would have ever thought that you're right where you're supposed that you that you're here? Who would have ever thought that you're doing what you're doing? This got to be God. Can you bring that scripture back up in Psalms? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. If y'all don't hear me at the top of this year talking to you, I need you to read that scripture yourself. Let's read it together. One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd. Say that out loud. God can't lie to you. Lift your hands and worship God. Every widow every single person, every divorced individual, every married person, unexpected provisions are coming in your direction. There are three people in this building, three of you in this building, this is your out of your comfort zone. You can't do it without God and you can't do it. You got to be in the right place around the right people. There are five of you online. You're not in this city, but this is the house that God called you to. The ministry that God called you to. On the screen, you'll see how you could make that happen. But there are three of you in this building. Don't make me beg you to live. Get out of your seat and walk towards me right now. Where you at? Get out of your seat and start walking towards me right now. I know I got the Holy Ghost and I heard the Lord say there are three of you. Everyone stand. Come on, everyone stand because I don't want nobody to have to step over you. There are three people in this building. I, w I feel the anointing real strong right there, too. Woo. There's one. There's two. Get out of your seat. I just felt a cool breeze come across me. Get out of your seat and walk towards me right now now there's one more person that's supposed to be up here turn the next to one next to you are we waiting on you if they tell you yes grab their hand and bring them to me because I got two more services to do get up 
and get up here. I'm going to count down. I know you're in here because I felt the anointing. Do me a favor. Everybody close your eyes for one minute. Close your eyes for a minute. I want to move on, but he won't let me leave you. His, I feel his anointing real strong. One man's obedience is connected to so many other blessings. Get out of your seat. Get out of your boat and walk towards me. Now count down. I gotta move. Ten. Move. I don't want nobody looking at me. I got all eyes closed. There she is. Come on. Those on the altar, I want you to do me a favor, and I'm grateful that you obeyed God. Do me a favor, turn around, and I want you to follow this gentleman right here. Everyone else have a seat. Everybody say, it's time to release. Come on, say, it's time to release. I want to give you an opportunity to release. First of all, your ties, that's your ties. I don't even belong to you. But I want everyone to get an offering in your hand. Throughout the day, there are a thousand of us that have been assigned to give $100. If you are one of those, I want you to get that seed in your hand. That is your offering. He told the lady, release first, then you'll have more than you need. There are thousands of us online. You'll see how to give. Whatever state you're in, whatever part of the world you're in, I dare you to release. And I'm going to pray that you get it back 100-fold. If you're going to text and give you text the verse N-O-C-S-E to 91694. If you're on our app, you'll give. If you're online and you're going to give it, can you send the emoji with your hand up? For those that are in the building, if you're going to sow that special seed of 100, I need you to stand to your feet because I'm going to pray a special prayer for everyone that's going to sow. You feel led to be obedient because he giveth seed to the sower. Come on. If you're standing, lift your phone up, lift your wallet up, do whatever. And if you're online, hold it up where you are. So God, we're going to release today. We hear the call. We accept the challenge. We accept the challenge. And we're doing what we've been commissioned to do. Now God, for everyone that makes this special sacrifice of 100, I pray that you bless them 100-fold. God, in the first quarter of the year, I want you to blow their mind. I want you to exceed their expectation. I want you to send an unexpected provision in their direction that would be supernatural.